Alrighty, welcome back. We're, we're going to sand some primer. We're going to do some guide coat. Um, I primed this stuff probably a day or two ago. This primer that I'm using with the hardener, generally you do not sand it that day. You kind of wait a, wait a day or a little bit more. That's what I usually wait. I'll spray it at nighttime. And then when I come in in the morning, generally it's dry. Uh, right now we have the dash. And I want Jolene to take a close up on the dash because the dash um, has, has got quite a few scratches in it. I don't think that we hit it with the 80 before we come in. And that's okay. That's okay because we're just going to prime it and see what it is. But basically this is, this is what's going on. Um, I have pinholes in my body fill. Everybody must know if they do body work, uh, you get pinholes. Generally, what happens is everybody, after they get pinholes, then they go to the two-part putty, and then they slide two-part putty over it all and, and do it again. Well, then you're on to a different sandpaper, and then you're off to sanding it again, and I don't do that. And the reason being is I do not want to cover it again, sand it again, and you have to think about the time that you're doing, the, the time, the process that you're doing. You're doing it twice. I, we've, we've put mud on this once, and we've sanded it once. Now we're into primer. Uh, we probably should have scuffed it with the 80 grit a little bit better before we put it in here, but I think that I put enough primer on it that I can get it. But I'm going to show you what I do. As we come in here, you can see the pinholes. And the reason, like I said, I do not like putting two-part putty on is because I do not like coming in sanding it again with a finer paper. And I'll show you what I do. I'm going to show you what I do only because I'll show you what I do. And you can take it. And if you don't want to take it, that's fine too. I'm just, I'm showing you my process. I'm going to mix up a little bit of mud. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, is I'm going to put all the pinholes I'm just going to do with my finger. And I do it before I guide coat. And the reason being is if I guide coat that, I'm not going to see any of the pinholes. It's a great way to hide things is put a guide coat on something. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of body fill. And remember, I'm not sure what this is a can, but I know I can buy two cans of, of fill for one can of putty. I know I can, and uh, I know I can, because putty's more expensive. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up. Just trying to make sure that it's not white anywhere. Just make sure all the hardener's gone through the mud. This is body fill, not two-part putty. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go over here and do this. I'm going to hit that, 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 hit that. Now I'm not, um, what can I say? I'm just going to put that on there, pinhole. I should have my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Pinhole, pinhole, pinhole. What I find is, is when I sand this stuff with the, the, with the, with the primer on there, the primer, believe it or not, is harder than the body fill. And when I sand it off, the, I am not cutting into the body fill that I've already put on there. I've not cut into it. And what happens with that is, is it allows me to just fill the pinhole. That's what it does. It allows me just to fill the pinhole. And that's all I really want to fill because everything else is good other than the scratches. And I'm hoping that we can get the scratches with the primer. So body fill in the pinholes. I'm gonna to go to the other side. I see it's like a, I see a sharp line going there. And I'm gonna just do this. Just put a little mud in it. I'm gonna sand it off anyways. I'm gonna put a little mud in there. And then I can get it with my Sandpaper before I sand it and see if I can get that feather that out a little bit better. I'm gonna get some pinholes on this side. Come over here, sweetheart. You can see some pinholes on this side. Hopefully, you can see them. That yeah, don't matter. They know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm filling pinholes. We don't want no fin pinholes in anything. If you see any pinholes in, 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 some, in your paint job or anything like that, you're automatic to know that there's been work done because you know that there's filler there if there's pinholes. That's a dead giveaway. If you see a pinhole in, in something, you know you have body fill there. And that's, that's the end of it.
there's a pinhole, you know there's body fill there. Alrighty, I'm saying that I got them all. So we'll have to take, you'll have to take in mind the amount of time that it took me to do that instead of if I covered it all in, in putty. And that's basically what putty's for. People, people would cover it all over again with putty. I'm not gonna do that, not even a little bit. I'm gonna let that set dry for a second. And let it set dry for a second. Hopefully I got them all. And, and if I didn't get them all, it's only because in my eyes didn't see them. That's the only reason. I see sort of maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, I got a piece of sandpaper right over behind you here, sweetheart. I've got a piece of 80 grit. If you do not ha know how to, you know, rip sandpaper, I'm gonna show you. Fold it, and fold it, longest, longest length, fold it in half. This is how I do it. You can do it any way you want to. Anytime I do something, it's just me doing it my way to show you how I do it. You take from me whatever you want. If you don't like what I do, don't take it. You know, do it your way. Please do, make yourself happy, for sure. Do not, uh, do not do it my way just because you, whatever. Anyways, I have it like this. I'm gonna fold it in three pieces, three equal pieces. And when I fold it, I can see that that distance there is the same as that distance there. I'll fold it over like this. Sandpaper's a big thing, it's expensive, it is. So then I got one piece of paper, two pieces of paper, three pieces of paper. Just a kind of a basic thing. I'm gonna let that set just for a second. Let's, let's go over to Jolene's chassis for a minute. I just wanna show the chassis, let this dry, and then we'll come back, we'll buff that off with an 80 grit, and we'll guide coat. I just got some cheap black paint, it's just cheap. Uh, the that's the reason I bought it, because it's cheap. I'm sanding it off, I'm using it for a guide coat. I think I paid $5 a can for it. Come this way, sweetheart, if you can. Jolene's got a bad back today, but she woke up at 10, she, but she's got a bad back. Just gotta be careful, sweetheart, come this way. Just wanna show you the chassis. We worked on it this morning. It's Sunday fun day. Um, I'm getting exciting, excited again about working on this car and, and having it set here. Um, lets me work on it a little bit. And now I'm getting more excited about getting it done. I'm almost ready to rip the engine out and start filling the chassis and having it ready. So you, if you want to come back here, I've, I've done a couple of things a couple of times. I've done a couple of things three times, but uh, that's the way it goes when you're building something. This chassis is for Joni's Bugatti. Um, what I have done is I've changed the bottom shock mount. It had a stud coming out before, and I've changed that. And the reason being is I have a pivot up here. I have uh, adjustment up here, and I have adjustment up here. But when this rear end comes up, it's going to come forward just a, a little tiny bit. That would, I would think that that would bend your shock if that come up, and that was out on a stud like this, and your rear end come up, and your shock couldn't go forward. It couldn't pivot. So that's why I changed that so it could pivot, and I changed the top so it could pivot. So there, there's no reason for any for the shock to be... Um, annoying anything and what I mean by annoying anything it should have free wheeling up and down we have adjustment here I'm thinking that we're only going to get six inches out of the bag I think the bag's going to get bigger and fatter once the the weight goes down on it so I think our our pan hard bar will be basically level by the time we get the the uh, air in it and get the body on it's in center of the the housing I move this over so this is right now the shocks are the same distance from the chassis on that side to this side that's why this bracket's here and that's why that bracket's over there because the pumpkin's not in the center so basically that's what i've done there um, i've gusseted the square stock and i might put one on the other side too um, gusseted here and gusseted here you would never bend that that's one inch three three sixteenths and I just gusseted it because I want it stronger there. I don't want it to rip off the chassis. Gusseted it on that side. Gusseted on the other side. Did not want to bring the gusset out too far at all because I do not want anything to hit the bag. Uh, right here is, you know, um, I, got, I think I'm going to have enough room there where we put the, the gussets on in the, in the pan hard bar. I don't think we're going to have a problem there. The shocks look really good. Uh, I still have to put a gusset on these down here. And that will be done when we take everything apart and we start putting it together. Um, first thing I did is I walked in the morning and I looked down and I said, eh. I had a piece, this piece here, I had it welded down here. 
And when I came in first thing this morning, I noticed that I would not be able to get my rack and pinion arm onto my steering arm, but I left that down in there and had my shock, you know, shock comes out to here, my shock would be out here, so that would be an interference. So, it, like Jolene said, that, is that called an interference shock? Yes, sweetheart, that would have been an interference shock. But anyways, um, I've, what I've done is I've taken it, I moved it, and I put it on top, so now we can run our rack and pinion through, which is no problem. When it came to this piece, then I had to change the top because I had one of these on the top of there. These are little brackets that I had that come with the cross members that I buy. They shove on the, on the tube and then you can bolt them to the chassis. I had a couple here because I didn't use them. So what I did is I modified the hole up top for half inch hole. Now I got a shock that goes up in here. And I, and I kind of like it because it kind of gives, it got a big hole, got a small hole, kind of matches all this sort of stuff. I picked the shock all the way up. The movement does, the shock does not hit and does not come all the way up and hit that. So we're, we're fine. I got just enough room for the, for the body, the body bolts on here and it comes down by, it comes just by that and we got a mount up here we're gonna have to make. So we got the front shock on this side. Jolene showed it on Facebook. I think she even put it on YouTube this morning. Um, we have the shock on this side. So basically we're, we're, we're cooking with gas. I need to put the rack and pinion on and I need to weld a few brackets for the flex lines. So the flex lines have to come off my, our brakes she has all new brakes. She has all new disc brakes for the front. Uh, they were given to us by John Wilson. Man, got to appreciate that. Given to us a long time ago, but we're just getting to it. But we're going to put disc brakes on the front, all brand new. Uh, the rack and pinion still has got to go on, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the engine out. I know where it's got to go because that's the only place it can go. Having a little few issues with that. I'm very happy with everything. It took a little bit because the reason being is because I made a boo-boo putting this in too close, just, you know, one track mine, you know, just going for it. But as I thought it over, thought it over, changed a few things, now I think I'm happy. Um, I think I'm happy. We get all our little brackets welded on. We're, we're, we're going forward, it's going good. It's looking good. I, I like the brackets in the front. Uh, all the welds have to be ground and clean. Uh, we are, we're going to make it look like it's brand new. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take the engine out and set it aside, and that will get fully detailed. Like, I'm not interested in having a having a cracked on the on the manifold gas or on the manifold. I'm not interested in that. I don't like that. I, I, I'm going to change the valve pan covers. I think we're going to use the the, the aluminum. One. I think these are aluminum, but we'll use the ones without the fins. Uh, we want to take it apart and, and really detail it, and that's why I didn't mind getting it dirty because it needs to be detailed. There's a few things for, forgotten on top of the engine. There's some places that are not in the right spot. We'll change those. We'll fix those, and uh, we'll really detail it nice because that's what we're going to do with the chassis. Let's go see if our body feels dry. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. It's just a, it's a little soft. I can just go slowly. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go slowly. It's a little sticky yet. It takes it takes you know a couple minutes to. It takes a couple minutes. What I'm going to do while I'm waiting, I'm just going to do a couple more pinholes. There's a couple pinholes over there I see, and I might as well touch them up while I'm here. That's what I might as well do. Touch them up while I'm here. Just put a little bit of hardener on. And if I have to prime the dash again because of anything, that's okay. And the reason being is, I'm gonna be looking at this full time when it's in the car. And um, the dash wants to be nice. We're probably gonna to two-tone it. There's a piece of chrome that goes across here. So one top color and a bottom color. So we'll get to see the colors. I've got some pieces here you can see. See, we filled them out. You can see pinholes in that. I can. We'll just do it before. We sand before we sand the primer and or put any guide coat on because we can see them. And that's the time to do it. You, want to, you don't want to do it after you put the guide coat on. <laughs> that's for sure because you won't see them. So you really have to do it before you put the guide coat on. Uh, and if you guide coat it before you do it, <laughs> then, you're, then you'll have to fix the pinholes after you've got it sanded with 220, then you're back into with an 80 grit. And you don't want to do that. I wouldn't think. I don't want to anyways. 
bump, bump, bump. I'm just gonna leave the, I got a couple of pinholes here in the, on the trunk lid. And this, uh, to me, is way faster than covering it all <laughs> with, with putty. It's way faster. We'll see, won't we? The proof will be in the pudding. That's what we always say, the proof was in the pudding. And if you don't do this kind of work, it's okay. But it has to be done. Somebody has to do it, especially if you're painting your car and you want it to look nice. Rub it on there. I got it. Rub a dub dub. I have filled on this on this trunk lid. You'll have noticed there's no there's no body um, like a a lip going around. There's no lip going around because I sandblasted it and filled it out because I did not want a lip put around it. I wanted to smooth it off and make it look the best it could when you open the trunk lid. It's it's going to fool a couple you know it will it would fool a couple people that you know was going to look at it. They say, well, where's the lip? Well, I've fiberglassed it and uh, filled it out to make it look that way. And the reason I did that is because it's my party and I cry if I want to. A piece of 80 grit, let's watch, let's take these off. I'm gonna try to stay on the body fill as best as possible because, you know, it is gonna sand the primer a little bit. Yes, it is, but it's not going to And if you miss one, just go back in your old filler and put, in, put some more on, you know. If you miss a pinhole, it's only a pinhole. Like, it's not like you're filling the whole thing out. They're pinholes. Crisscross in my paper. Just trying to get it to cut as quick as I can. Now, we must, you must be able to admit that I did not affect any of the body fill underneath the primer. I did not affect any of it. If I put this over top of the body fill and sanded it, I would be sanding the body fill that I've already put on and I would have affected it in some way. Now, you, must, you must understand that. Where I'm sanding like this, I have not affected the body fill that I've sanded underneath. There's no, nothing that has been touched. It's got a little bit of primer has been sanded. Yes, it has, but not the filler underneath. And the filler underneath, I'm saying that was, was done well. And we can remember that uh, Zach did this and it was his very first time doing body fill. So this is Zach's job. I am finishing it with taking the pinholes out. around here a little bit. This is polyester urethane feather fill. I don't know what, exactly what it says on the can, but it's a, it's got hardener in it. I showed you when I sprayed it. If you weren't here, you can go back and watch the video if you like and see the stuff that we sprayed on. And this stuff, sometimes um, I, don't I don't mind putting body, I like putting body fill actually over top of this because it sands really, really nice. It feathers, the body fill is softer than the primer generally. And it lets the body fill feather out nice.
you can see the pinholes being filled. You can see them. See that? See that? You can see them being filled. And I don't mind leaving a little bit of filler on there because I'm going to sand it off with the primer. There was a little line there where I didn't think it was feathered that nice. I'm just going to Go from the other side. Yeah. Yeah, stay where I'm at. Just looked like it had a sharp edge there, so I want to put a little filler in there. And also, it's nice to put a little filler on sometimes because you get to see what it looks like. You know, it's hard to sometimes, you know, with a little bit of filler on it, you, or a little bit of primer on it, you get to see what things look like. Now, another thing too, if I would have not put lots of primer on this, I wouldn't be able to get it all. I, you know, we, we put three, four, I think four coats on this. Probably three, four coats on this, maybe even five. And it's, you know, it is what it is. And you, you have to put the product on, you have to put the product on to generally do the job. If you don't put the product on, well then you're back into mixing it again and doing it again. And uh, once you do it again, that calls for more time. It takes longer. Buffed off. Not scrubbing it real hard, just scrubbing the filler, trying to get it come off. You can see, like it's stuck in there a little bit. Stay away from your edges, your sharp edges, because that's where you're, you're going to wear your primer off quick. Or, you know, if you can, just be thoughtful of that. See your pinhole we got there? See it? As long as you see it, baby, it's okay. It's going to go easy on the edge here. You can see the other pinhole I got? Well, see that? Here we go. Seems like we're doing a good job. Now this this I'm 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 saying that this is a big problem when you when you do something like this. A big problem is when you when you do your filler work and then you get it straight and make it looking good. Then you go and cover it again with all the putty to take all your pinholes out and, and think you you know think you're doing what you have to do to get it done. Well, how many how many times have someone gone at something and start sanding it and then you frig it up and it don't feel good? Then you st then you go back over to the putty again and do it again. It's like that that, that this is why I do it this way because I've done that so many times is fix something get it feeling really good, go and put the putty on top of it, and then start blocking it with a 220, and then, and it, then it becomes all wavy. I, I'm not into that, I don't like that. Uh, this is why I'm doing it this way. This is just a quick, I hope, I'm hoping this is a quick dry, prime, quick dry paint, because if it's not, it's gonna annoy me, because it's gonna fill up my sandpaper. But this is the only black I had in there, and I'm gonna spray it on. I'm not going to touch any of this stuff because I haven't checked it over for pinholes. I don't think there's any pinholes. There's no, no body work on this stuff. But that stuff there we had to cut because the window's cut and it's a trim around the window. 
And that's why it got fill on it because we had to cut it. Uh, we flooded it out, the little weld spot, we flooded it out, even though it was, you know, a little bit, we still had to flood it out. So this is what I'm going to do. You, as you can tell, I have not disturbed any of my body work that Zach had done. I did not disturb any of it because I did not go through the primer. That's how I know I did not disturb it. This is called a guide coat. And it's just black paint that goes over top of your primer. So when you sand it, you can see what's not sanded. And that's the end of it. You, you can see what's not sanded and what doesn't look good. And I suggest that if you don't do this, that you do. And the reason being is, is because you might miss something. And uh, when you're painting cars and trying to do a real nice job and spending lots of time, you don't want to miss nothing. And as I'm doing this and show this, um, and you can see how long it takes to do something. This is why people that build cars and have nice cars do not want anybody touching them because there is so much work involved into getting them to look the way they want it to look. And that's basically why I do not touch somebody else's car that is nicely painted and all done. I do not touch it because I know how much time they have invested in what they are doing and then their project and how much money it costs and all that sort of stuff. So if you're watching this and you, you, know, you don't have an old car, just realize that there's a lot of work gone into something like that and that person probably does not want you touching their car because of how much work it causes um, if something happens. And uh, it's just a common sense thing, and, but it, sometimes it has to be explained so people know. I'm gonna grab some sandpaper over here. I like a 220, and the only reason I got this is because it's, uh, it's in a disc form that goes on a DA, because that's all I have right at the present moment. And, that, and this is what I'm gonna use, because I have. I'm just gonna fold it in half, and uh, I'm going to wait a little second or two, let this go, guide coat dry. This is called guide coat. And the reason because it's called a guide coat, because it guides you to perfection. It can. It really can. And uh, what I would do is I would guide coat this. I got primer on it. got my pinholes fixed. I would go 220, sand it all down, get, it all, get all the black, all the guide coat off it the best I can. And then I would guide coat it again and then do it with 400. That way there, you know, you're guide coating it each step and you know that the scratches are out of it because it shows every imperfection. You'll see, you'll see the scratches in this thing because I can see them there. It shows all the imperfections at what's going on. So this is the way that you get a good job done on your car. Just gonna wait for a minute, let the, the guide coat dry. The reason being is it'll fill up the paper very quick. Don't want that. Now, come look at that. You can see all the scratches that are left in that. Amazing, eh? Amazing. Let's, let's sand them out. I'm going to swipe it. I'm not going to finger sand like finger, my finger sand like finger sand like that. You leave three finger marks, just kind of your wax on, wax off sort of deal thing. That's how you sand primer. If I have enough, come over here and take a look. Look, them scratches so deep you cut your knuckles on them. <laughs> right? You know, you know, it should be a little bit finer than that, but this is what we prime, and it, it's a good thing to show that if you put the product on. So we know that we have not affected any of the any of the body fill underneath. We have not affected any of it. We are using the primer to fill scratches. That's what we're doing. Probably missed a couple pinholes there, it looks like. See what happens. See, and this is where if you use like your lacquer primer, see something like that, see if you had lacquer primer, what I mean by lacquer, you're just using thinner and there's no hardener in it. Lacquer primer, you start trying to cover up scratches like that, after a while it would come back. 
This is why we're using the stuff with the hardener in it. It's because we're hoping that it does not come back. That's what we're hoping. We're hoping that there's no shrinkage in the primer. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. And I'm hoping that I have enough product on there to take all the scratches out without, without priming again. I'm hoping. I'm thinking I missed a pinhole there, don't you? I'm thinking. But you can see how the scratches are leaving. You've seen how the guide coat tells you where you're, you can see what I need to sand. I need to get that stuff out. And what is going on, this is a flood. It is a flood, yes it is. And we're going down to the ocean floor, which the ocean floor now is either filler or metal, right? That's the ocean floor. Because we have flooded it out with filler, that is the ocean floor. It's gonna come over this way, so we hurt for a second. We're getting her. We're getting her. We're not, we have not hit, we've not hit filler yet. And basically to me, I, I'm, I'm saying that I know I've got a good job done. If I'm able to sand off the primer without hitting filler, I know that I've done well. And the reason being is because I've got a flood on the whole thing and it's smooth. That's basically what I need. Um, I'm saying, or I'm not saying, um, the body fill that we primed, I'm saying was flat. So if we if we have a guide or if we have some primer or a flood that goes on that's nice and flat, and we have no nothing peeking through. That means that we've done a real good job. Or I mean, Zach has done a real good job. I'll give Jack some credit. Why not? He's the one who sanded it. Come take a look. You can see the pinhole I fixed with the body fill. You see it? You see it? You can see it. You know, you can see it, like it stays in there, so. That's why I know. That's why I do it the way I do it. Beautiful. That's why I like this primer so much. It, it does wonders. It does a beautiful job. Or I find it does. That's how minute that stuff shows. And if that's there, paint will not cover it. It'll cover it, but you'll see it. If you know what I'm trying to tell you. Paint does not fill anything. Paint just intensifies it. That's what paint does, intensifies it. So if you think that you've got a scratch, you can see a guy, your guide coats can, can identify a scratch, or you've got a black mark on your car after you're sanding it, the paint is not going to fill it. It's going to intensify it. That's how, that's how, when I say, that's how drastic it is to get a guide coat on there so you see that stuff. You wouldn't see that if, if you were just sanding and, prime, and painting. You would not see it. You would not see if I left it gray. Ask me how I know? <laughs> From experience. And experience is knowledge. And me telling you something is information. Now. Yeah.
Now, a little bit of filler showing up there. That filler is sitting on top of the, of the, of the primer, and that filler would want to be covered before you paint it. And that's where epoxy comes in. Epoxy is primer that you do not have to sand. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to paint this and I had a little bit of body fill showing or a little bit of metal showing, you would come in and throw a little, whoosh, little splash of epoxy and you don't have to sand it, you can just paint it. Now I'm going to wipe this off. We'll have to ask ourselves, which would be quicker? Me covering that all in putty and blocking it all out again? Or just hitting it with a little tiny bit of body fill, buffing it off and getting the pinholes and doing what I just done? You have to ask yourself. And then you, then, then you, can, just, you, can, then you can tell yourself the way you want to do it. I'm going to sand this a little bit more up here, see if I can get it. Got a little guide coat in there still, so I want to feather it off a little bit. Also, do not forget that I put more than enough primer on here than I needed, or else I would have not been able to get what I got. And that is a nice job. No pinholes, no scratches. Now, come look at this panel. Now, we, there's no black on there. I can, still, I can still see where I filled the pinholes. I can still see them with a little bit of filler. To me, well, I know the difference, but I'm just trying to show you. And if you can take it, if you like it, if you don't, it's up to you. Do it any way you want to. But it's nice to know. It's nice to know. And, and the only way you know, usually know is you're shown. <laughs> That's how I always know something I'm shown. Or I try it on my own and go for it. But that's what I've done. You can see I might as well finish the scratches down here. Now, if you're using lacquer primer, like I said, a lot of them scratches would come back out at you. Yes, they would. And the reason being is because the primer has not got hardener in it. It's just primer with, with thinner in it. That's why I use the, the feather fill. And you must admit, if I did not put the guide coat on, I probably would have not got all the places I need to have gotten. So, I'm, I, I, I'm, to me, that proves what I'm saying. So you have, you have to take in, in, in mind, if I covered it all in putty, I'd have to block it all out again and do it again. If I covered it all in putty after I put body fill on it, yes I would. I've skipped the step, which makes me faster. Um, do, do, do. I can sand more, but obviously I've got 220. When I sanded the whole dash and I got it looking like that, I guide coat it again, do the exact same thing, guide coat it again, and then I hit with 400. And the reason I would do that is to get the 220 scratches out of it to get it to a 400 grit. And I would hope when I'm doing it that I do not still hit the ocean floor. And the ocean floor is mud or metal. This mud here I put on, that's on top of the primer. So I have not affected anything underneath of the, mud, of the, underneath the primer to hurt it in any way. Let's take a little bit, I'll get a new piece of paper. And I will put a mask on when I get going to it, but I was, I'm talking right now 
And uh, when I get into it, we will put a mask on. Just so the young people know that watch, you should always wear a mask. You're young, don't hurt your lungs. Just go outside and have a cigarette. No, that's not true. Anyways, here we go again. You can see all the scratches. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it off until the guide coat is gone. And the eye will know that I'm ready to guide coat it again and hit it with 400. Once I hit it with 400, I, I, I would paint it with the urethane. I will paint it with the urethane, no problem at all. If you're, excuse me, if you're going base clear, you need to go another step with your sandpaper. You need to guide coat it again and do the 600 or the 800. You know, you really do. That's why it costs more money to do that because it takes more time. I'm not sure if I'm going to base clear. I probably, I probably am not going to base clear Elvis. And the, this is the reason being, I'm going to paint it and be happy with it. I'm going to, I'm going to paint it. If I, you know, if I make a boo-boo, I'll just repaint it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a nice job sanding it down. I'm going to put a nice paint job on it. And if I get a little bit of dirt in, a little bit of something in it, I am not going to worry about it one iota. And the reason being is I don't want to spend the time sanding it and buffing it. I do not want to spend the time. You can if you want. But I am not going for any awards. I'm going to make myself happy. <laughs> That's where I'm going. I'm going to make myself happy. And uh, to me, the, I'm going to make myself happy. And making myself happy is not spending a week or two weeks sanding and buffing the car. Nope. Not I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't think I'm going to do it. Jolene's car? Maybe. Maybe. That's up to her. It all depends how it turns out when I press spray. But... Probably I, I will not. I will just paint it and be very happy with it. You know? Sometimes it's good just to be happy with what you have, you know, other than happy with what you need, what you want, what you want, you know? Or somebody else has got it, you know? Be happy with what you have. And what somebody else has is none of your business. <laughs> is it not? None of your business. Just be happy with what you have. Be grateful for what you can have and what you, what you can get. Just be happy for it. And I will be very happy with this. Uh, just a nice, clean paint job. Uh, probably a urethane. You know, probably spray it once. If I have to spray anything again, if I get a run or something, I will fix it. But other than that, I'll probably just go with it. Because I know it'll make me just as happy that way as it will be me standing, standing a week on it and uh, polishing it. I have nobody to impress other than myself. And Jolene. I love Jolene. Jolene's amazing. She woke up the bad back this morning. She still looked like a 10. Ha! Hey, baby, huh? Looking right. So basically, I hope you get what I'm doing here. I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to crisscross the paper. I am not using a block. I already, already, straightened, already straightened the mud out, I did. And the dash, and on, the, on, the, on the car, I'm going to use a block. Yes, I will. I'll guide coat it and block it out. Yes, I will. But on the dash, you can see that I am not going to know if anything's wavy or whatever. And generally, the way I do my mud work, it's generally not wavy because I have flooded it out and I've stopped before I hit the ocean floor. Generally what you'll see is when you see something that's wavy, they have not got enough filler on it because you can see the ocean floor. If, it, if, it, if that was covered, it would be flat, generally. So anytime you see a car that looks a little bit wavy, they probably haven't got no filler in it and they probably, a lot of the ocean floor is showing, you know? And this is a very, what can I say? It's a rigorous job this year to, you know, keep good pace. You know, if you're going to run, if you're going to try to do a business, if you're going to try to go into this and do a business out of it, you, you really got to buckle down and do a, a vigorous 
pace because if not, it sure does run into a lot of money. If you do not run into a vigorous pace, if you not, do not learn a vigorous pace, that's one thing I try to, sh try to show here. Um, you know, you, you can sand something down. Yes, you can, but there's a pace that you should be doing it. You know, there should be a certain pace. Make her brand new without a spanking. See the pinhole? See the filler there? That's that pinhole I fixed. And if someone, if you know, if there's naysayers, well, it bridged the pinhole. Well, that's what it's for. <laughs> if it filled the pinhole, that's what the primer's for. You know, that's what it fills. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. Don't fool yourself. That's what we put primer on for. Primer, this primer here, if someone, if you say, oh, there's no filler in my car, well, shame on you. That's what that is. <laughs> it's filler. It's primer filler. You know, you say, I didn't put no, no primer, no, no, no body film in the patch. Well, so if you primed it 10 times and, and, and did it, you still got filler on it because that's what it does and that's what it's for. No one paints their car with, with, with primer. <laughs> no one, so, you know, it's kind of, you have to really, yeah, so I'm, I'm past it. I know the difference and uh, I'm just trying to let you know. You can see right there to me that looks like almost like body fill has stopped and it was not feathered properly or not finished yet. So the primer filler will get it. Huh? The primer filler will get it. Alrighty, I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that that. I hope that I've proven to you that I do it this way because it's quicker. I hope I've proven that. Um, and that's basically it. And, and like I always say, the proof is in the pudding. So I have not put any putty on top of my filler and I've got the job done. 10-4. Signing out, and I'll put a mask on. And I want all the young people to put a mask on. I apologize, not showing a good example sometimes of the safety or the, the mask and that sort of stuff, but we do an hour video. It's okay for an hour, isn't it? Maybe not, maybe so. Anyways, signing off. <laughs>